Girl is dumped in trash and gets nose bitten off. You won't believe what happened to her. One look at the little girl and the horror of her early life was all too apparent. It wasn't that Durga's dark eyes were big and looked as if they could bring over with tears at any moment or that she didn't smile. It wasn't even that a sense of sadness bore deep within her and that she was reserved around strangers having been raised in an orphanage all her life. Tragically, her face betrayed her struggle to survive from the moment she was born, for Durga was abandoned in a bush when she was just a few hours old in the rural West Indian state of Gujarat. There, this defenseless Todd was feasted on by rodents and insects. By the time a passing police officer stumbled upon the wailing bundle hours later, her entire nose had been gnawed away. All that remained was a hole in her face. She was also suffering from dehydration and malnutrition. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. That this baby survived the ordeal was down to just three things. Sheer good luck that she was discovered when she was, the skill of the nurses and doctors who labored to save her life, and it would seem the baby's own tenacious fighting spirit. She was very weak and very tiny and we were afraid she wouldn't survive. Recalls Ila Benanjariam, the superintendent of the orphanage, Kuch Mahila Kalyan Kendram, where Durga was eventually taken. She was a day old and weighed just two kilograms. She was so delicate we had to feed her with cotton balls soaked in milk. But Durga pulled through these difficult first few weeks, got fitter and fatter, and turned into a spirited toddler. However, while other children at the orphanage came and went, heading for what was hoped to be a better life, no one wanted little Durga. The damage to her nose, there was no funding for the surgery needed to fix it, repeatedly put potential parents off, as well as leaving her susceptible to infections and colds. On four separate occasions, couples volunteered to give her a home and then changed their mind because of the damage. Indeed, it would be three and a half years before a woman browsing an adoption website thousands of miles away in the US had her heart melted by this youngster. Kristen Williams, a single high school teacher living in Cincinnati, saw beyond the damage. She saw Durga's big brown eyes in her need for a loving family, and she decided that she'd like to provide her with the chances no one ever thought she'd have. I saw those eyes in that little face and I just had to adopt her, says the 44-year-old today. I called my adoption agency and told them straight away that I'd have her. I just knew that she'd be happy with us and I got the ball rolling. In fact, this wasn't the first time Kristen had been down this path. Two years earlier, she'd adopted Money, who's now 10, another orphan from India. The opportunity to get married and have children hadn't happened to me, she says. I just never met the right person, but when I reached my 40s, I really wanted a family, so I looked into adoption. It felt the right thing to do. I'd spent some years teaching in Africa, so I knew a little about the world and I knew there were many children that needed loving homes. Kristen first looked into adopting from Nepal in 2010, but having paid the adoption agency fees required to start the process, the US government suddenly suspended all adoptions from the country. It was concerned that not every child being presented as an orphan actually was one. Officials said that there was evidence that unscrupulous agents were making it profitable for families to give up their children for overseas adoption. It's a huge stumbling block, she says. I'd never been to Nepal and I had no emotional connection to the place, but it was a country I felt drawn to. The suspension changed everything. Kristen started a blog about her experience called mynepalibaby.blogspot.co.uk. One day, she got a message from a lady in India who'd read it and said she was so touched by it that she wanted to help. She suggested adopting from India. She was amazing, says Kristen. She helped me so much and I still thank her today for everything that's happened. She helped me hook up with an adoption agency and helped me with all the paperwork. She was like my adoption agency. I would never have thought of India without her. Once Kristen was registered with an adoption agency, she was sent pages and pages of pictures of children of orphanages who desperately needed homes. I was looking through lists of children up for adoption on my computer screen from an agency and there were so many, she says. It was heartbreaking to see how many girls there were who needed a loving home. I saw her face and it was like an electric current just shot out and hit me in my heart. It took my breath away. I just thought, this is your daughter. I read her file. She was five. She had a lot of scarring. She had a very traumatic history. And she ended up being everything I needed. Over the next two years, she was put through mountains of paperwork and court processes in order to adopt money. And even though she had never met her, she never gave up. I knew I wanted money in my life, so I did everything in my power to make it happen, Kristen says. I wasn't giving up on her no matter how long it took. Eventually, in December 2012, Kristen met money for the first time. 
The little girl couldn't speak fluent English and was very quiet and reserved. She simply stood staring at Kristen, who instantly fell in love with a withdrawn youngster. Meeting money after seeing her on screen for so long was the most magical moment she remembers. It was an instant connection when we met. Although she didn't speak much, I knew she accepted me from the way she would look at me and hold my hand. It was overwhelming how much love I had for her. And so on February 14th, 2013, Kristen finally became Money's adopted mother. I call her my forever Valentine, she says. It was such a special day, I was so blessed. She opened my eyes to so much. She was so young and yet so accepting. She trusted me even though I was taking away from everything she knew and she was open to a new life with me. I'd never been to India before, never been a mom before, but together I knew we would be happy. Money was so full of love that we just fit together like a little family. She made it easy for me. Soon after Kristen arrived home, she knew she wanted to adopt another child. I wanted to adopt a little sister or brother for money. Kristen told her adoption agency who promised to keep her notified of all availabilities. Then last year, Kristen's caseworker called her to tell her about Durga. Money and I were driving home from a party that afternoon when my caseworker called saying, we have a little girl for you and you'd be a perfect family for her. I told her to email the information over immediately, Kristen recalls. As soon as they arrived home, they logged onto the computer and Durga's little face smiled back at them. I cried straight away, Kristen says. This gorgeous little girl with such beautiful eyes had suffered so much. Money looked at her photo and said, is that my little sister? I said yes immediately, there was no hesitation. I didn't need to think about it. The caseworker asked if I needed 24 hours to be sure, but I said no. The adoption process began and not once did Kristen hesitate. I couldn't wait to meet her, to hug her and for her to become part of our family, she says. Once the little girl was ready to be adopted, the orphanage asked if it could hold a handing over ceremony and invite press, as it was its first international adoption. Kristen agreed and was glad she had the opportunity to meet the staff who'd raised Durga, as they obviously loved her very much. They were so keen to meet her new American family that they were waiting with a little girl at the airport when Kristen and Money landed. It was pure chaos, she admits. Durga was extremely stressed and crying. Every time she looked at me, she would freak out screaming, crying and turning away from me. It wasn't the wonderful moment I daydreamed about for the last 18 months. The handing over ceremony wasn't easier. It lasted four and a half hours, it was very hot and obviously emotional. And then they brought her to the stage and handed her to me. I felt so bad because she was completely traumatized and crying. Finally, I had her in my arms, but it was so hard to see her so upset and not be able to take away her pain. Luckily, Kristen had time to spend with her new daughter who she and Money named Rupa, which means beautiful in Hindi, and Joy is her middle name as this is what she hoped to give her. But the little girl was heartbroken to be leaving the orphanage, a reaction her new mother hadn't expected. Every day as we tried to get her nowhere, she sobbed endlessly. If she wasn't sleeping, she was crying. Her whole world had just been ripped out from underneath her and she didn't want any part of this new life until we arrived home. Friends had hung a welcome home sign above the door with red balloons. Rupa started smiling, then laughing, and then dancing, and she's never looked back. Since then, Kristen says it had been a complete whirlwind looking after her two daughters. She's taken Rupa to see plastic surgeons who say that when she's older, age 7 or older, she'll be able to have a new nose. It's not our major concern right now, says Kristen, who's taking the next eight months off work to help her youngest child settle into her new life. She was experiencing such intense grief in India that we didn't get to see any of her personality. But once she got home, she started letting us in and her adorable personality came shining through. She literally is a dream come true. I'm not kidding when I say she's always happy. She's never had a temper tantrum. I know it's crazy. She wakes up with a smile on her face and tells me, Mommy Rupa happy. I also love that she feels confident enough to tell us what she likes and doesn't like and what she does and doesn't want to do. It's clear she feels secure enough in our family to share, but literally she's smiling and laughing all the time. She's definitely living up to her middle name. Now Kristen is focusing on her family and even though she doesn't rule out ever getting married, she says it would take someone ultra special to be allowed into their lives. Of course it's hard work looking after two children on my own and there are days when I'm tired, but no matter how exhausted I am, not a moment goes by when I'm not happy, she says. Every time I look at my two beautiful daughters, I'm just so grateful that I'm allowed to be their mother. Williams and Money decided to call the little girl Rupa, meaning blessed with beauty. Money and Rupa eventually became best friends and began to adjust to their new life in the United States. But the story didn't end there. When popular TV show The Doctors got wind of this incredible family history, they felt compelled to help. The doctors arranged for Rupa and Money to meet highly qualified and skilled surgeons to help the sisters heal both on the outside and inside. 
The doctors then removed several of Money's physical scars and then gave Rupa a brand new nose. Kristen is confident that her girl's physical transformations are a step in the right direction for them to leave their past behind and focus on the future. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.